Today I'm going to show you how I paint hair with watercolors. Watercolor is my favorite medium for doing hair because it can fill a large area very quickly, unlike pens and pencils which require a lot more time and precision. And as always, I can't just show you one way to do something because there are so many different textures of hair and if you only know how to do one type then you're missing out. According to the curriculum for cosmetology and barbering in California, there are four textures of hair. Straight, wavy, curly, and tightly curled. So that's what we're painting today. Before I jump into the tutorial, I have a quick tip for you that really improved my painting in general, but especially with painting hair. When we first start out, most of us will get a set of different paintbrushes like this. And I think for most of us, especially with watercolors, we'll gravitate towards the round brushes because you can pretty much do everything that you need to do with them. I'm definitely guilty of buying a big set like this and then only ever using one or two brushes. So what I'm recommending is to try out your square flat brushes. It might seem counterintuitive to use a stiff square brush for something as soft and flowing as watercolor, but I think it actually gives you a lot more control, which is something we kind of want for doing hair. Even if you've got good control with your round brushes, switching up your brushes with ones you don't use as often can increase the life of your favorites, so try to find uses for all of your brushes if you can. Now I'm going to show you similar strokes with the flat brush, and my theory is that if you hold it vertically like this, you actually have a little more control when you're doing straight lines because there are less bristles to splay out everywhere when you add pressure. So as you can imagine, when you're painting hair and a bunch of hair very quickly, this is kind of helpful. Another tip before we get started is to think of the hair or the head in sections. It's what stylists do when they're cutting and coloring hair, and it will help to keep you from getting overwhelmed. This might be the worst head I've ever drawn, I apologize. Four sections is pretty standard. You have your two front sections and your two back sections. The front sections frame the face and go from the face to about behind the ear. And then the back sections will be everything behind the ear to the very back of the head. I don't actually draw them out and number them like this, it's just a visual to show kind of how to think about each section. And depending on the thickness of the hair, each of these sections will actually have more subsections, but I'll go into more about that later. For all of the hair types, my first step is to do a base layer in the lightest color that I'm going to use. It can either be completely filled in, or you can leave a few highlights if you want to. The flat brush is really great for this step because the corner of the brush is very stable so you can get the paint right up to the edge of your sketch without much effort. For the sake of not wasting paint, I'm going to use some colors that I don't actually use very often. So these are the two colors that I am using. The one on the left is lighter and the one on the right is darker. Obviously you can use whatever colors you want. For the sake of simplicity, I'm just keeping everything in the same color family. For straight hair, I take my flat brush, turned vertically like I showed you at the beginning, and paint downward strokes from either where the hair is parted or from the hairline if it's showing. In this case, her hairline isn't showing, so we're going to assume there is a center part near the top of the head. And the way to make this look really nice is to vary the pressure that you're applying with your brush. Similar to the strokes I showed at the beginning, you want to push down and then slowly lift up to create a point at the end of each stroke. This footage is slightly sped up, so obviously you can take your time with this. Unfortunately, I didn't realize that this was a terrible angle for filming this technique, but don't worry, the rest of the tutorial is more visible, and the angle will change eventually. I'm adding more pigment while it's still wet, and I'm leaving some areas unpainted to make a highlight. 
after this dries, we're going to add one more layer, but before we do that, we need to think about those sections within the sections that I mentioned earlier. We want to imagine different sections or clusters of hair. That way the hair looks more believable and not so flat. If you're using a reference, you can look for them, but if not, just try to imagine how hair might fall naturally and overlap on itself. I'm switching to a small round brush for this step. And all I'm going to do is use my darker color to define a few sections using that same up and down painting method that I've been using. The places I try to focus my shadows are at the part or hairline and on the underside of the hair if it's showing. Usually that's the area framing the neck. With watercolor, less is more, so be careful not to reactivate your lower layers too many times or it will start to get muddy. I don't have a small enough flat brush, so I'm switching to a small round brush for the rest of this tutorial. Just like last time, I like to start at the part or the top of the head and work my way down. I like to start establishing sections by putting in wavy lines. And then I'll start filling in the different parts of the wave on each individual section. I'm drawing the waves in different places so that it won't look too uniform and instead it'll look a little bit more natural. Let's talk about highlights and shadows. When hair catches the light, it tends to reflect in a halo shape around the head. It can show up all throughout the hair, but will typically be on high points. So with wavy and curly hair, that halo shape will be broken up to sit on the high point for each wave or curl. And again, this is where I like to focus my shading. With wavy hair, the shadows are also broken up and you'll see even more shadows between each section because the waves are casting a longer shadow over each other. This is an even more simplified version. So here are my highlights on the top of each wave. And then here are the shadows underneath each wave. Between that are a few midtones. Then we show where this section of hair is casting a shadow onto the section behind it. Then we'll add highlights and shadows to this section of hair where we've done an alternate wave pattern. And then just keep doing these alternating waves until you've covered the whole head. With each darker layer that I add, I just want to keep reinforcing my sections instead of letting them get lost.
using the small round brush again and starting at the part or highest point on the scalp. For curly hair, it's a similar method to waves, but you make your S shapes closer together. You can do corkscrews as well, but don't overdo it because we want to avoid making it look like scribbles. It needs to look very intentional. Curly hair has more of its own shape and takes up a lot more space than straight hair because of the way the curls create volume and hold each other up. For the most part, I'm doing all of the same steps that I did for the previous hairstyles, like starting from top to bottom and left to right, and going from my lightest shade to my darkest shade. The main difference is the movement that I'm doing to create the more curly texture. Now just like before, I'm using shadows to create defined sections. We're also using that same technique of varying the pressure that we apply to the brush, that way our waves come out with a little bit more character and aren't just all the same shape and size. When you get to the end of a strand, make sure you're using the lightest pressure possible, if any at all, so that you can create a very fine curl. Personally, I think my curls could still use some work. I want them to be more like the waves where they're more defined and the highlights are up in front and not behind, but so far I haven't figured out a way to do that, but I am working on it. And when I figure it out, the curls will have their own updated tutorial. For tightly curled hair, we're going to use a small pointed brush to make lots of tiny, delicate circles that are directing outwards away from the scalp. It might look a bit tedious, but it's actually kind of therapeutic and the resulting texture that you get is very much worth it. It might look random, especially being sped up like this, but I'm being very intentional and methodical about where I place my curls. And notice how the curls get more fine towards the ends, just like in the last one where we're lifting our brush up. Painting this hairstyle in general requires the least amount of pressure on the brush because you want to have those very fine and delicate circles. For this one, I'm adding my shadow color at the same time as the first layer while it's still partly wet because it's going to create a more soft finish when it dries. Obviously these portraits are super tiny, so if you're doing a larger portrait or even a normal size portrait, you could use much bigger circles and a bigger brush. Here you can see that I'm focusing the shading near the scalp and between any defined sections while leaving highlights in each section and leaving the area around the perimeter of the hair where the light shines through more as a highlight. If you don't typically draw or paint different textures of hair with your portraits, I recommend giving it a try and including some more diversity in your artwork. And my final tip for you has to be mentioned because it's something that I do but isn't a traditional watercolor thing. Pencils and other mediums are a completely valid option if you want to add even more detail on top of your watercolors. That might seem obvious, but I used to be afraid to mix different mediums together. 
there aren't really any rules, so feel free to add anything that you think will make it look better. Since I wasn't happy with these curls, I'm just defining them a little bit more with a darker color. And that's how I would paint the four basic hair textures with watercolor. Thank you so much for making it through the whole video and be sure to give it a thumbs up to let me know that you learned something.